Okay, so today's installment uh, on my YouTube channel is about dental aerosols. Um, the buzzword right now is aerosol. Everything that everybody's talking about in dentistry is revolving around creating aerosols and managing aerosols and minimizing aerosols and what do we do with aerosols. Um, you know, the CDC and the ADA and all the dental associations and dental boards are all concerned about preventing cross-contamination from coronavirus um, by moving it from one patient who may have it to a dentist, to a dental auxiliary, an assistant, a hygienist, or potentially to another patient. So I put together this little video with my dental assistant this morning. Um, she's holding the section and helped me set up a little bit, um, illustrating basically two types of aerosol. So on the top left of the screen, you're looking at a an ultrasonic scaler. Now this is the 30K version, which is 30K meaning 30,000 hertz, so 30,000 vibrations per second um, with water. There's no air coming out of this, it's water um, vibrating at 30,000 times per second. And then down there in the center is a conventional high-speed handpiece. And the, this particular high-speed handpiece is an air-driven high-speed handpiece, which at full speed will spin anywhere between 300 and 400,000 revolutions per minute which if you drill that down to a, a per second rate, it's about 5,000 revolutions per second. So we have 30,000 vibrations per second, 30K in the ultrasonic versus 5,000K or 5K, 5,000 uh, revolutions per second. But the difference between the ultrasonic and the high-speed handpiece is the high-speed handpiece has pressurized air blowing that um, aerosol out of the tip. So you may see it, you may be able to see it. There are actually holes here that blow air and water out of the tip. So um, I'll go ahead and narrate the video as we start, but basically what you're going to see is uh, the two different um, instruments here creating an aerosol. Um, that's an alginate bowl, by the way. For reference, the opening of that bowl is about six inches. It's about yay big. Um, you can see the size of the aerosol, the size of the droplets from the ultrasonic are about you know, and they're a little bit larger, but the high volume, high speed drill creates a much smaller, finer particle size. So this is the ultrasonic with a high volume evacuation. Um, and what I was trying to demonstrate is that as you bring that ultrasonic down inside the rim of the alginate bowl, um, the escaping um, aerosol is much less, but that's at a six inch diameter opening. So if you envision the actually the size of a mouth, um, and potentially with another suction device, there are several different types, um, and a high volume evacuation, we can minimize that aerosol. Now the high speed drill, you can see how much aerosol that creates. Um, running at full throttle with a, a small amount of water, that's not at full throttle with the water, but the air is, is up all the way. And how much of that plume is coming up out of the bowl even with a high volume suction. Now with the decreased opening, the aperture decreasing from the patient being closed slightly, or mouth size actually, it would decrease that, but you're still going to see a significant amount of aerosol. So there's a much higher risk of aerosol creation with the high-speed drill than there is with the ultrasonic, primarily because of the amount of air pressure that's forcing that aerosol and blowing it across the room. Anyway, so that's my quick video for today. Hopefully this is helpful. And you can see here in just a second it switches and goes in reverse, just for fun. Oh, there we go.